This will be the build video for this Johnny Quest uh, Prober vehicle. I did a separate demo video if you want to see it in operation. You can watch that. I'm going to start by taking it apart. There's four screws in here. I've already taken two of them out. I'll take the last two out. There's the body. I certainly didn't do a very good job of painting it, but I didn't want to do it again. Some notes about the body for building it. These uh, little arms are just held on. There's a hole in the, or two holes in the arm and the holes in the body for a piece of a 1.75 millimeter filament you can just to uh, locate them with. You can just glue the filament into the arm and then glue the whole th arm onto the, uh, the uh, body. There you can see the uh, little filament sticking through for the alignment holes. You can see that all these things here are inserts that you print separately. These were printed on uh, multicolor on the Bamboo Labs uh, A1 Mini. This is multicolor also. The windshield and this porthole are just single color prints. These lights print in two different halves. There's a separate file for these uh, side lights and the top light. And there's also a hole in the side of each one for a locating hole for a piece of uh, 1.75 millimeter filament for alignment purposes while you're gluing it together. Then they're just glued in here. This is unfortunately all printed with uh, support. We'll get on to the main part of the show here. We have two TT motors, single sh single uh, shaft. Uh, the motor will have to be slightly modified. Right down here, you may be able to see it. I've cut off the little nubs. See this little nub. I just took to take your uh, little flush cutters that you get with your 3D printer and just. Chop those off. That's all there is to that. The motors go with the shaft out, obviously, and but that'll make the, uh, at least on the ones I have, that'll put the uh, wire terminals to the inside, so you'll need to insulate them with a piece of tape so they don't touch one another. It's all a crowded fit. Here's your uh, 30 teeth, I believe it is, spur gear, one on each side that drive everything. 3 AA batteries. Right down here is the uh, receiver from a Coke can RC car. You'll need to take one out and strip all its wires off and then just wire it up. Uh, wiring it up is pretty simple. From the battery, your red wire, the positive wire, goes through a switch. From the switch to uh, the VCC, I believe it's called on the board, the Black ground wire goes from the battery pack straight through to the, the ground on the board. And you just have uh, two wires for each motor that go to where the, uh, on the Coke can RC car, two of the wires went to the motor and two of them went to the steering. And those will be your two separate uh, uh, channels, I guess you would say. Let's take a battery back out. There's a little door here, clamp thingy. This little screw here, all these are three millimeter screws of various lengths. You just back that off until your door flips open. There's two screws in here that go in from here that pin the door. One from this side, one from this side. The battery pack will come out then. I've got it all tied down. Now this little part right here is a, I think I call it motor divider. That's this part. It has little nubs. The nubs fit. Uh, let's see. Motor goes like this. Let's say it goes like that. The nubs fit like that inside these little holes to line everything up and there's a little ridge right here 
and you put you probably have to put both your motors uh slide them both in at the same time can't remember if i did or not but anyway this this keeps the motors separated apart and what holds the motors in is there's a uh, two screws right here they don't go all the way through they probably go through about like this so they just pin the motors in place one on this side one on this side they thread into this part and just uh they don't thread into a motor Let's see what else do i want to show the switch has got a little clamp on it here that holds it in place the switch is the one i always use on my projects it's just a cheap little very cheap little switch I'll put a link, there's a link on the thing of our site on which one to buy. I think it's called a sub-miniature or something like that. It has a spacing for a PC board, so 0.1 inch centers for the terminals. That's not critical on this, but that's, uh, when you buy it, that's generally what you look for. Say the battery fits in like this, and that swings through and clamps down. Just put that back together. Here are the tracks. They're printed in place. They look like this when you print them. That's where they come off the bed. To get them to, to uh, assemble them, all you do is snap them together. These are pretty easy to snap together compared to the other ones I made. Let's save that. Well, I said they were easy. Yeah. Like that. These, uh, there are three different types of wheels on here. This one has the gears that drive it. This one, which is this one right here, also has, a, like, like the drive one, it has notches for these uh, little, I don't know what you call them, They're like sprocket things, teeth, teeth. You fit like this. You want to take and drill uh, these out, this one. All of these wheels will be drilled out with a three millimeter or one eighth inch drill so that they rotate easily on a three millimeter screw or they all have to rotate easily the the screws I use to put all this stuff together are 20 millimeters long three millimeter by 20 millimeter always I just I buy this kit here and then I just replace them as I need you can buy the individual screws and fill them up as you go it comes with a these five different ones I use a 20 millimeter for these when you buy a replacement you can get them a hundred pieces at a time so drill out the holes what else want to say cut off the nubs it's on the motor told you that when you put your switch in put it so that the forward is on backward is off this is a this is the front of a the motors are in the front, so the body goes on like this. Put your switch in so that when you turn it on, it's placed in the front, so there's some some logic to it, so you'll know when it's off. I think that's about all there is to it. I'll show it running. Uh, These, these uh, controllers don't have an on-off switch, so you need to pop the battery out when you're not using them, or that battery, well, batteries will not, sorry, get it on camera. Pop the batteries out when you're not using it so that the uh, batteries don't go dead. They have to be paired, these 2.4 gigahertz ones, so you turn the receiver or that on and turn this on.
I hope I've uh, given enough information to assemble it. If I left something out, just leave a comment on Thingiverse. Uh, well, I believe that's all I wanted to show, so thanks for watching.